256 players, no lag, and reinventing the first-person genre, these are all claims made by Sony's upcoming title, MAG. We're here at the Marion Hotel in Dublin, about to meet with Ed Byrne, the creative director of Zipper Interactive. We're going to ask him your questions and see what he says. Question one is from Fearless. What are the effects of other people's actions on yourself? Is it a case that you can't progress through the game uh, without having something done by the other team? For example, if one team is going for kills and not objectives, how will this affect your ability to win the game? Well, that's interesting. Um, you know, it, there may be cases where different squads have different objectives in the game. So, um, you know, one squad may not be as cohesive as another, and they may not be taking the objectives as much. Uh, so in that case, I mean, if, I, if I'm reading the question right, I mean, uh, there's nothing to stop your team going over there and taking their objective for them. So it's not like, you know, each squad is tied to an objective and only they can take it. So actually, you know, a really good squad will take their objective, and then they'll go help someone else take their, you know, their objective. So in that respect, um, people aren't really bound by what the other squads are doing so much. Um, you know, that being said as well, um, the idea is that within a squad we expect that there will be sometimes you know, squads that are very cohesive and are very organized and are working with a lot of teamwork. And there are squads where maybe only some of them are going for the objective. And we wanted to make sure that it was balanced, that you know, a squad that, that couldn't maybe hold together as much or had, had a higher percentage of newer players wouldn't be penalized for not making progress as much. But in the end, we wanted to make sure that the players who were really interested in going for the objectives and really pushing uh, their side's victory uh, would be able to move around the map and, and be very fluid in terms of like determining you know, who was going to win. It would be them because they were you know, going for multiple objectives. Uh, but even when a player is playing solo, uh, when a player isn't necessarily going for an objective, he's probably still helping. Um, you know, players can, can repair defenses. Um, and, and maybe not take back the objectives, but repair the AAA, which stops you know the attackers from being able to parachute in. Uh, other players may actually um, go in and repair um, like tank traps, which means that the attacking team can't seal the vehicle. So uh, there's a lot of opportunity for players, um, even without knowing it, to further you know the actions of their team and help their team to be victorious. How are we supposed to group together with more than eight designated members in a squad, and will it work? Uh, well, if you're talking about you know grouping together with more than eight people in a squad, uh, if I'm if I'm if I'm thinking about this correctly, uh, it would it would be impossible to group together more than eight players because that's the base squad level. So uh, one squad is eight players. That's fixed. So if you have ten friends, you know you're going to have to choose who goes into the squad of eight and, and which two are going to go off to another squad. Um, but you know, the clan system uh, will allow people to be able to uh, join together as a clan in a squad. So if you have you know, eight uh, of, your, of your clan mates together and you all decide you're going to join uh, a map, you can group join into the map and we'll reserve a squad for you. Um, and so you will all go in basically as, as, a, as a single group of eight without any strangers in there. Um, so that definitely helps. Um, we have no plans of, of really obviously making um, you know, squads variable in size. Uh, but we're, uh, obviously we're, we're continuing thinking about how to, you know, to facilitate clans and to you know, think about bigger uh, group join systems as time goes on. The next question we have is from Dark Void 98 How do you like your game so far and how is it coming on basically? Has there been any changes from the, when the beta has begun? How do I like the game so far? It's brilliant. Uh, no, uh, I, I think that the uh, game has exceeded our expectations. Um, and that's a bold statement, but really, you know, uh, there was a lot of questions that we even had internally about a 256 player game and how to make that really fun uh, all the time. But um, judging from the reactions simply of the beta uh, players who've been in, in, the, in the private and the public betas now, um, the response has been phenomenal, um, really beyond what we expected from, from this state of the game. That being said, yes, you know, we've been taking the feedback and we've been, you know, we continue to play test internally as Zipper. So, uh, you know, we've been, t we've been striving to make sure that the game is as polished as possible, obviously, but we are putting all the feedback that we can, all the feedback that we can change at this stage and, and tune and tweak and polish the maps as much as possible until the very last day. So um, it's, been a, it's been a great experience. The game is going very well, but we acknowledge that, you know, our, our work is, is only done when we basically hand off that last gold master. The next question we have is from Connor. Will you have any downloadable content coming in the future that you can talk about? And how about free downloadable content? Uh, we have nothing that I can talk about. But, you know, 
uh, as always, watch, watch this it. space. <laughs> so it's been said that mag will be absolutely have no lag, basically. Uh, how have you done this? And is there a minimum set of network requirements that I need at home to get the best out of mag? I mean, as we all know, Ireland doesn't have the best internet connections here, so. Yeah, this is true. I mean, uh, there are there are regions and, and countries with even worse connections, believe it or not, than Ireland. But we uh, we made sure that the engine could uh, handle as much uh, cases as possible, or as many cases. And so, the technology that we developed uh, is is um, specifically meant to you know, scale, um, so that we can perform uh, as well, um, if not better, than most games on, on uh, low bandwidth situations. Uh, upstairs now, we're running uh, the demo on a, on a, on a 2M connection, 2 megabyte connection. Um, so I think that, um, you know, we're basically proven that it's fully playable. I wouldn't say necessarily no lag. I mean, that's, that's a lot of hyperbole. Um, but in terms of what we've seen, um, you know, going to Gamescom, um, essentially, uh, the responses from, from players uh, uh, now in Ireland and the UK uh, that we've received, um, and then you know, judging by how it's performed while we're here in Ireland, um, definitely we've seen that the game is is uh, is running very very well. So you know there may be some you know, experiences. What's the minimum set of requirements? Well, you need a broadband connection. That's about all I can really say. Um, but I think that people will be pleased uh, in terms of how well the game plays, simply because that was the first question that we asked. And the first thing that we worked on of the engine before we did any of the gameplay or any of the stuff that you see now was simply how can we make this game perform um, uh, completely satisfactorily with uh, 256 players. And you know, for all intents and purposes, I think we've managed it. Now that the bid has launched in Europe, uh, what sort of uptake have you had on it? Has there been kind of a massive surge in people signing up for the beta? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of players. I mean, obviously there was a huge anticipation um, when the beta started going live in the US. Um, and you know, the UK players were, were very excited. Um, it, what was interesting was um, you know, the, we turned the servers on today for the, the press event that we have going on today. And we had you know, the queues started filling immediately. Um, so there's a lot of people who are just you know, itching to play. Um, we're definitely seeing you know, the uptake now. I mean, the, the beta's only been available in, in, um, in Europe uh, since, I think, Thursday. So we've only seen a few days of actual play. Um, but, but gauging from what I've seen in the forums and what I'm hearing uh, from people at Zipper back home, um, yeah, the response has been phenomenal. Will there be a lone wolf style option for players who want to jump in and out as opposed to scheduling a big match with all their friends? Yeah, very much so. And we wanted to make sure the lone wolf players were in amongst the players who wanted to play as groups. Uh, it's been a, a huge mandate for us um, uh, at Zipper to make sure that the game is fully playable by lone wolf players as well as those who enjoy you know, the highly organized you know, team gameplay. Um, and that's to say that, you know, uh, that lone wolves can be just as effective for the team and ensuring victory, uh, like the first question we were saying, as the organized players. And part of that's due to the fact that we have a system where a squad leader can set an area uh, or a specific item uh, object and say, you know, that is the target of the squad. So, you know, if the rest of the squad rushes over there and tries to, you know, to take it, uh, obviously the, um, they will score points for, um, for, you know, making kills and taking the objective um, that the squad leader wanted you know taken but lone wolves who hang back and snipe from afar you know you could be taking out enemies um, who are around that area and even though you're not in the mix you're still going to get points um, for for eliminating enemies in what we call the frago area the fragmentary order area so that's to say that you know even if you're a lone wolf player if you decide not to hang with the pack if you decide not to go with your squad if you want to kind of just go off and repair things or fix gates or just shoot people I mean, you're always contributing to the effort of your team and we just wanted to make sure that there wasn't like a special game mode for lone wolves. We wanted to make sure that lone wolves and players with a more individual, individualistic play style uh, would have a place within the larger context of the organized players.